G'day and welcome back to my channel. Well, as you can see, I've got some planks finally on the uh, 150 Constructo Bounty and it's starting to look very shipshape indeed. Now, in the last video, we did the um, chocking at the rear and we fared out the hull. We got everything organized. This time, I've had to do a bit more fiddling to those hull ribs. They needed a little more attention. And then I've started to shape and fit the planks and I've been using this. It is an electric plank bending tool. So there you go. So I will show you how to use that uh, tool carefully. <laughs> As you can end up burning yourself with the bloody thing. And, uh, and I'll show you how to get these planks bent to the curvature of the hull and how to get that big bend in there on the bow. Really not that hard. <laughs> it's, it's the simplest thing we're probably going to do. All right, does that sound interesting? Yeah, okay. Hang around, coming up shortly, roll the music. <laughs> Before I can start planking, I need to address a few problems with the ribs on the hull. A few of them didn't actually go all the way up to the deck, as you can see there with the it's pointing. And I ended up having to put some shims in, and they were just thin planks that I actually bent over the ribs to basically increase their height, and then sand them smooth, fair it, and that was fine. That will mean that I'm now ready to start doing the planking. I put the first plank in. As you can see, it doesn't actually fit flush with the deck. It's a funny setup with this bounty, because you need to be one plank below the deck. And it seems kind of strange you've got to do that, but what happens is, at the midpoint here, it starts to curve up, and that plank will end up pretty well flush by the time we get here to the bow. Well, it should have, except with my bow, um, this centerpiece here of the deck is bowed up. The clever cloggers have made this before me, didn't make the deck flat. So if I put that over there, you'll see there's um, there's daylight underneath, right? Can you see it? You probably can't see it. There's daylight. So my deck is bulged up by about three millimetres. Because what would happen is this is supposed to rise and rise up till it's about four millimetres above the deck and then stay there. But because I've got this three millimetre rise in the centre, it only ends up being one millimetre there. But that will still give me a nice effect and it'll be close to what they're trying to achieve. Which I don't know, well, I don't know why they want to do it that way, but that's how the plans are, that's how it is. So, um, you know, that this curve piece will go in there. Now, uh, this bit of sapley, this is the two millimetre thick, um, six millimetre plank, and I've made that about 450 long, 450 millimeters long to make that piece. I've run it from the second rib here because I'm going to block all that in with balsa. Okay, and I've made it slightly over because we can cut that flush later. I've pinned it every second one to get it to the shape that I wanted. And um, at the stern here, instead of stopping where the balsa is, uh, for these first few planks, I can run them right to the stern because they basically don't curve in. The whole reason for the blocking here is so that you get all the lovely curves. Well, there's no curve here. It's still basically the shape of the hole. It's still that shape. So I can, here's one I did before, I can just continue to run those planks in all the way. And they'll only, I'll give up about the eighth plank here with my curving. Now, none of this will be seen, of course. This will all be covered by the thin veneer of half millimeter thick planks which will go over the top. So we are simply laying the first layer down to get the shape of the hull. Now I believe the reason for this strange putting this plank on before you put the top plank, so you're putting the second plank on with the first plank, so you don't normally do it. I mean normally you lay your first plank pretty well level with the deck and then you work your way down. Well we're going to do the second plank and then we go back up and we do the first plank. Now the reason being is this plank here, which is going to curve around the bow, when it's in position, there's going to be nothing to nail on. It'll be sitting right on the edge of this deck, which well, should be, if it was done properly. So if there wasn't this great big bow, bow here, bow, <laughs> bulge, 
That's the bow. If there wasn't this big bulge here from the other guy, and I can't see that's correct, I know there's a little bit of camber on decks, but essentially usually when you do a ship model, your decks are flat, and they're flat everywhere else except for here. And that's buggered up this whole geometry here of what's supposed to be done. But now I'll just keep working with it because that's just how this kit is. If I bought it from scratch, we'd have a totally different sort of thing happening. But anyhow, because that's supposed to sit, so it's just touching the very edge of the deck, there's nowhere to nail. And I'd even tried to nail my plank on here when I put it in, but all it did was um, splinter and lift the, um, the deck planks. And then I realized, yeah, what you've got to do is you've got to bend that plank to shape and then it's got to be glued onto there and then clamped as best you can. And um, it's awkward. It's strange. I think it's totally unnecessary. I don't know why we need to do that, why we need to have a slight lift there. We could accomplish that in so many other ways, but that's essentially what makes this kit work and I will go with it. Now... How is this plank bent? Well, it's pretty simple. Now my plank is getting nice and soaked wet in this spaghetti holder here. This is for doing spaghetti in the microwave. It's rather handy. Although, doing a great big long one like this, I mean, usually you do short lengths, but I'm doing great big long lengths at the moment. Now, once that plank is wet, it is a lot more malleable. Because I'll show you how much of a bend this thing has got. Put, the, put this on there. Right, you'll see, oh, that's how much it's bending. I mean, it needs to go up at least a centimetre at the stern and the same at the bow if we went all the way. But all I'll do here is, because I've got a plank in the way, I can use my little clips now. These little clips I made up, showed you how to do those in a previous video. And I go to the alternate one that I don't have a pin on, so things are in the way, and I just start clamping it. This is how I will do all the planking. Sometimes I will need to put the pin in straight away if the, uh, the clamps can't hold it in position. Uh, such as when I get to here, I can't really get a clamp in there. So usually what I do is I pin outside of it. And I just put the pin in. And essentially all that pin's trying to do is stop it from bending back down. And while it's wet like that, it's very malleable. Now one other trick you can do, and I don't believe that this is actually strictly by the book, but I, I came across it by accident, is this is a electric planking tool and uh, bending, sort of bending planks. Normally you do it off the model and you bend on the side that you want to see. But you can do strange things with this, as I found. While the planks are on there, if you just use it gingerly and dry the planks, they will set in the position that you want them. It's rather handy. And sometimes if you've got some weird curves, you, by using the weight of this, and pushing down, you can get things to curve beautifully into shape. Especially when I was getting that clinker effect on the bow um, with the final planking, by putting this on and basically giving it a push, it actually let the glue ooze up and through, that's why it's got a bit of burnt brown on it, and the whole thing can form to shape. Now once these planks are dry, and by using that, um, that method they'll dry pretty quickly, but what you can do, and because really at this stage, it doesn't matter if we put some holes in this, because again, it won't be seen. This is the primary layer. Right? This is not the final layer. So we can do some things that are not quite pretty if they aid us in getting the job done. So we'll push that up hard against there. The reason I've drilled a hole is to stop the plank from splitting. Okay, and you'll notice that's one of the ribs that I um, I corrected. And you can't even tell, can you? But it actually has a little shim on it. And this one here has quite a big shim on it. But they corrected them so that they're sitting they're sitting right. Because you imagine, I mean, look at it now, that's that's perfect. If, if I hadn't have done that, this plank here would have tilted in about two millimetres. And then this plank here would have tilted out. It would have been a V-shape. So, 
So that's held in there, and I can do the same thing here. Go to this one, because it's already started to bend to shape and already setting, and it's already drying, sorry. I, um, I'm real happy with this new pin boss. Bought this one especially for doing the wood models. And then I'll pin those in there. Don't go in too far with your pins, because then when you go to pull them out, you rip the tops of them. I probably should get those nice pins that I've seen John use on his channel that um, have got um, little balls on the end and they seem to be a lot thinner. They would probably be the go. So here I want to get that one in. What I might do is I could probably remove that one now. It should be holding in place. Yeah, that's holding in place. So I can hold two planks together there. No glue at this point. All I'm doing is setting planks to get them to bend. And I actually won't glue them until they're dry. And then I'll come back and I'll glue them all into place. So is that correct? That should be... Yep, that's basically it. Should be there. So I want a hole there. You haven't got one of these little pin vices, they are invaluable for doing this sort of stuff. Now you could nail these in, some people do that. Um, then you've got to basically sand those nails or pull them out, and that can be a problem. I like these pins because I can rip them out, they're nice and easy. Okay, so that's holding in there nicely. So that plank is pretty well the shape that's supposed to be. And if any part of it is too springy, I can easily get some water and so well it's not bending properly there I'm not happy with the way it's sitting and then I can get my electric plank bender and dry that area and instantly I've actually convinced it to settle to that shape and that seems to be the trick with this electric plank bender. It, it does work off the model as well and that's how the instructions sort of tell you, you know, take your planks off the model, work out your curve and bend them. But you can do all this lovely bending, as I found, on the model, which is a neat trick. Because really, you're going to get exactly the right curve you want by doing it on the model. All right, look, I'll keep going because I've got to get those planks. I've got about seven of them to put down, but it's another five. And then we'll tackle this one, which has got to go on here. I've had my big thick plank here soaking in the water for some time. I've done both ends, but I've given it a really good soak at this one end so that it is very flexible and it's starting to want to bend. Now what I've got to do is I've got to get a bend in it that'll go around the, uh, the hull there because this is going to be my top plank. So I'm going to do that bend now and get it, get it in shape, get it roughly pinned in place so that um, I know it's going to fit later on when I glue everything in. Now, this is where the um, electric plank bender does its job and really comes with its own. Now, I need, um, I need it to bend. So, what we do is, and you're probably better off not working on your mat here, working on um, something... Like another block of wood, which is what I should have had here. But if you work this, it will start to really bend. And if it gets dry, and just wet it again. I really want quite a bit of bend there. And you just feel it start to move, so don't push too hard or you'll snap it, but you really start to feel it move. And it starts to get its, its bend happening. As you can see, I'm nearly, I'm nearly, uh, well, your angle just doesn't appear, but I'm nearly at right angles here now. This, um, this bend. A bit more water on that. Now 
Now I could have marked this out and um, worked out exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm actually winging it. I'm only going to do the one for the moment. And I kind of have a feel for roughly how this plank should bend. So I've already got that much of a bend on it. So it's getting close. It's getting very close. But the trick that I'm going to use here, see I can pretty well bend into position already. The trick I'm going to use is that I will pin it in place and do the final bend on the outside, which is never going to be seen. Never ever. So you really need to pin with an end, or at least one that you can grasp to get out later on. Okay, so my plank, which has got its rudimentary bend on it, can't really speak today, really, honestly. That's in place, and and is that holding it? Anyway, yep, it's not too bad. Okay, so what I want then. See, one useful thing with these pins is because they stick out a little bit, they're, um, they're pretty handy to put to lay it in. So we're just about there, right? Now to convince it that that is exactly where I want it to be, we'll now use the we'll now use the bending trick because it's kind of so close. Okay, so there it, there it is. It's basically, that's the bend that I want. All right, because that's only because of the wood so wet. So now we will dry that wood in position using the electric bending tool. And what this will do is set our curve. One bad thing about these pins being plastic, if you leave the electric bander on them, they'll of course melt. And then you go, what's that smell? And of course it's um, burning plastic in here. And then you get it all over the end of the iron and um, you'll then wipe it onto the next plank. Okay, that's nearly dry. If you need more, if you feel that it hasn't bent enough, wet it and go again. You don't want to be running this over a dry plank because it will scorch you. Be very careful with that. Especially if it's the outside and say you wanted this to look good. You wanted this to have a nice appearance. Well, you scorch it and that basically means you've burnt the wood. And that's the last thing you want. Well look, we have actually bent that plank. So there you go, that plank is now bent in shape. Easy as that. So now we can actually continue on. Now we can't get any pins in along here at all. It's a bit of a pain, but one trick you can do, because at this stage all we're trying to do is get this thing to keep its shape, is I could go between the planks. Where's the spot? I could cheat and go between the planks. Just to basically give that a little bit of a lock in place. Now once we get to a position like here, oops, or even there, we are definitely got some meat that we can actually start putting some, we can put some pins in. So this one here, for instance, really it won't be right on the middle of the, uh, the plank. We'll have to sort of go down a bit low. We'll have, to be, we'll have to sort of figure this out. It's going to be about there. About there, good guess. I'll angle it a bit, sorry, hand in the way. Yeah, I can feel wood biting as I go through, so that's going to be a good one. Yep, that's got that locked in place. So already we're we're locked. There we go. It's holding. Now here's the weird bit because we really have a huge curve here. And it's not, these are not tapers, these are actually curves. And unlike below, 
actually I was going to say, unlike below, it won't snap into place, but there you go. It actually has snapped into place. So there you go. Now as you get further along here, the plank will be the same height of the deck, so I will be able to get a pen in there. So I could probably pull this one out. I don't need that one anymore. That uh, tail section there is pretty well dry. And I could put a hole here. Sorry, hands in the way, but you know, you get the idea. And again, don't worry if you make mistakes at this point. Nothing has to be pretty because it's all going to get covered up. All except... Didn't draw it on far enough. All except the inside of there, see? That there, you did not want to run the hot iron on and score it. And scold, scold it. Um, it's got its brain pretty because that will always be seen. We never cover that up. It may have a top rail on it, it might be obscured, but it's basically best to try and keep that one as clean as possible. All right, well let's um, let's get some pins and planks in here because we can't we can't get our little brackets on because we're working backwards, which is kind of silly, but you know. So we might mark some points. So we want to go there, we want to go there, and um, that might be enough actually. That might be enough. So let me. Um, And this is basically all I do with the planking is drill a hole, put a pin. Now, when we actually glue this in, rather than putting in the plastic pins, I'm going to put toothpicks in. Oh, it's hard to believe. And I might even put a little picture up on the screen here to give you an idea of what's going to happen. The, um, the planks get glued in and then the toothpicks get hammered in as spikes. Now, if they were... If they were the same colour as the wood, they would disappear. And in fact, I used that technique when I did the final layer of planking across here. There are spots along here where there actually are, be hard pressed to see them, but there actually are not toothpicks, but I made little spikes out of this sapley wood. And I put those in to fill the holes because again, trying to get that final plank in to bend all the way around there was really tricky on the top layer, as it has been here. And I needed to put some pinholes. I might get some nicer pins when I do the next ship. Okay, that's locked in place. So we have accomplished that entire bent. And there it is, it's drying off. So um, I could put my iron on it now and, and do that, but I'm basically going to leave that because um, I find about four or five planks, that's kind of enough for a session. That, um, you know, that's a few hours work and after that I feel like a break in doing something else. So I usually leave it, leave it to dry. I'll come back and I'll glue those in place. So we'll do that next time. Next video I will show you, they're already bent. So it's just a matter of pop, making a note of which one's which, popping them off, uh, putting some glue on, putting them in, gluing them in, and then we can work on putting the bolsa into the hull at the front here, the bow, okay? Which is what I've done as the stern here. I've already started shaping it. So it's already shaped. Now what I have had to do, and I didn't tell you is, um, we have left this high here, this piece of balsa, because we're going to have planks after this, and they are not going to go right to the stern, so they're going to butt up to our little bit of balsa. And that's why it's exactly a plank width high. We did that in the last video. So I needed to cut that balsa out of there. But after that, we will then sand and shape everything. It will all become apparent, it will all come together, and when we're finished, it will be as lovely as that. So. I'll end up with those lovely curves and shapes. Not that difficult. All right. Well, that's it for this video. Come back next time. We'll start doing some gluing and we'll just do some blocking. So it's goodbye from Australia and it's Huru from Arihudini.